everyone and welcome to educer surgical clinics today we are going to discuss a very practical topic that all the residents would like to know and that is how to conduct a ward round so this is a cognitive aid that all of us have used to standardize care and this video is to summarize the soap criteria i am dr gunjan desai i'm a consultant gastrointestinal and hpb surgeon whether you are a medical student or you are in pg or you are an intern or you are a surgeon orthopedic any field of practice when if you are admitting a patient sot criteria is something that you must know to standardize your care to avoid missing points when you see your patients daily on rounds sometimes we may be rushed sometimes we may have a lot of patients we have seen 100 patients a day when we were in government hospitals but these were the criteria that helped avoid missing points like checklist so incorporate this into your practice and make it a spinal reflex and i'm sure that it will help you in your practice so do we need criteria for rounds the answer is yes because we need checklists all of you are aware different checklists are available to standardize care because the next person who comes to take over your duty also needs to be aware of what has happened the day prior effective note keeping is very important from this point of view as well we also know that medical legal issues are routinely happening in the healthcare field adhering to criteria and following a fixed pattern in your work helps you to be medical legally secure also this can be used as a learning tool for students so that they are aware of how the senior clinicians are taking rounds so SOAP like i said is an acronym it stands for subjective assessment followed by objective assessment then your overall assessment of the patient then plan for the patient and there are some additions that i would like to point here only for the sake of completeness of your record keeping and that is SNDT. What is SNDT? We will see in upcoming slides. But remember that besides SOAP criteria, that is subjective, objective assessment and plan, that you need to mention daily in your rounds for each and every patient. SNDT is very important medical legally as well as from record keeping point of view. So let us see SOAP first, and then we will see SNDT. So whenever you meet a patient, greet the patient, introduce yourself. keep things comfortable then let the patient talk first this is very important the patient will tell you what has happened in last 24 hours are there any new complaints if the patient was admitted with complaints what are the trends of complaints for example if the patient was admitted with abdominal pain has the pain reduced or the pain has worsened or there is new onset pain in some other site that you need to know so this is an assessment part where you want the patient to talk to you then there are some leading questions like can the patient already diet is he passing motions is he or she passing urine well so these are some of the leading questions that you need to ask to review the various systems we will take separate videos on history taking as well as examination this is only for rounds so when you see a patient on rounds you have to be quick this entire process has to be finished in 5 to 10 minutes including writing of the notes so you, this stencil should be embedded in your mind so that this becomes a reflex when you see any patient on rounds so chief complaints the patient will tell you trends of complaints and review of systems this is also a area in your assessment where you rule out allergies or any other specific concerns of the patient for example the patient may not be able to walk or there may be noise in the patient's room so all these concerns also need to be addressed when you take rounds because finally it's your responsibility to keep the patient comfortable and happy once the subjective part is over and the patient is satisfied with the discussion then you go into your assessment assessment starts with general examination of the patient temperature pulse respiratory rate consciousness blood pressure saturation 
if the patient is not talking then what about subjective assessment well then you can say the patient is sedated or intubated or on a ventilator or the patient cannot talk some of that needs to be mentioned on your record coming to objective assessment also look at chest cvs and cns and then go into focused exam now put a separate slide of focused exam because uh, the focused exam part of objective assessment changes for different uh, fields uh, we are looking at some of the points that i see regularly as a gastrointestinal and liver surgeon so just to give you a perspective of what all to include in the objective criteria so once you have seen vital stress cvs cns general and systemic examination of the patient as well as the focused exam that we will see on the next slide then you also have to review the records to look at the intake output drain output right the sisters notes which are there for the last 24 hours any reports that you advised on the previous day you have to check if you have given any references then you should look at the referral notes see for completeness of notes because the file maintenance is important part of hospital accreditation and if there are advices from others or if you want a review reference this is the point where you have to assess all these points objectively so this takes three to four minutes essentially once you have formed a habit of seeing all this so what you also can do then is talk to the patient then when you are checking the patient someone checks the records it's a team activity right so like i said for focused exam this is just an example for surgical patients you look at the wound you look at the dressing if the dressing is soaked the dressing needs changing how is the wound is it infected is it healing look at the drain color drain site look at the catheters look at the neckline neckline may need changing catheter may need changing if the patient is on patient controlled analgesia or patient on epidural when to stop it is it causing side effects look at the pressure areas and avoid bed sores or pressure sores look at leg swelling nutritional deficiency do a quick nutritional assessment when the patients are post surgery assess whether the patient is mobile on his or her own or needs support and check if the physiotherapy is going well so these are some of the points that you need to see when the patient is post surgery as a part of objective assessment of the patient of soap criteria in what i would label as a focused exam right now once you have done your subjective and objective assessment this, this is the time when you create an overall picture of how the patient is behaving is the patient improving or is the patient deteriorating or there is no change in the status of the patient in last 24 hours now remember that files are records which are medico legally very important so if the patient is deteriorating i would recommend discussing in your team and letting the team leader know and then document the points very objectively with your team leader's assessment also included so that there is no discrepancy in the file this is not highlighting that you should hide facts but the facts should be cross checked if you are not the team leader because deterioration in a patient should be assessed by your entire team and then documented if there is a change in diagnosis or if you have found a new differential diagnosis in your assessment then this is also a point that has to be discussed in the team and then mentioned on the file right so this is your assessment part overall view of last 24 hours of patient journey in the hospital that is assessment now once you have cleared your subjective and objective assessment your overall assessment then is the part to decide the plan for the next 24 hours or 12 hours depending on where the patient is based and what the care plan is if the patient is in icu you may need four hourly rounds or hourly checks so depending on your schedule for that particular patient the plan has to be decided you have to decide what tests are required in the next 24 hours 
you have to decide if there is any change in treatment like change in antibiotics change in ventilator setting change in medication whether the patient needs any new referral then you have to inform the referral and document that on file and very important part of plan is to update the patient of what happened in the previous 24 hours and what you are planning in the next 24 hours so that there is no lapse in communication with the patient and the relatives. Now, like I said, this is one slide that I add to my SOAP criteria uh, lectures and that is because this is medical legally very important. Something that is not very medical but something that a lot of residents tend to forget. We call it SNDT, that is signature, name, date and time. So nothing medical about this, but very important medical legally that whoever has put the notes should sign, put a name, date and time. So these are additions that I would like to suggest. Now looking at a template of how we can incorporate this SOAP criteria in half a page, like I said, this entire thing has to be finished in 7 to 10 minutes. Discussion with patient and relatives can take longer if the patient is sick or not well. But your assessment and your plan has to be decided in 5 to 7 minutes, at the most 10 minutes. In busy centers, you may be seeing 30, 40 patients in a day or maybe 100 patients in a day if the center is very busy. But this criteria, like I said, once you format it in your mind, it works as a spinal reflex. So it's very important to use SOAP criteria to improve your practice and improve patient satisfaction scores as has been already studied and reduce lapses in medical care of the patient. So template suppose I'm taking around, like I said, SNDT is very important date and time. Highlight case seen by Dr. Gunjan, the page, we have a patient label. So each page we put a label so that uh, the frame of the note is ready. Then your next three lines are patient complain of. Describe the complaint, look at diet, bowel and bladder. Basically review of systems by asking leading questions. Since I am a gastrointestinal liver and pancreas surgeon, my standard questions are pain, diet, bowel and bladder habits. In examination, I have to do a focused exam, post-surgery, all the points that I said, general examination, mentation of the patient, systemic examination, and look at intake and losses. Then you give your impression. So this is how the note will look like. And your impression will be patient doing better or there is a change in treatment plan. Then you put your plan on the right hand side in a new column and put your sign and name. So this is how a single note will look like each day or every 12 hours, depending on your frequency of rounds for a particular patient. So I think that is all that we need to discuss on SOAP criteria. Like I said, incorporate this into your daily rounds, whether you are a medical student, an ICU student, or a surgery student, SOAP criteria is very important, medical legally as well as medically, as well as practically to improve your practice. Thank you.